so welcome everybody to our Czech Talk series, uh, another session. Um, today I, I'm really glad to welcome here um, uh, Maya Costantini and Frido Pokogni from Artificial Intelligence Center of Excellent Group. They will be talking about Project Talk. And uh, for you, uh, if you will have any questions, you can write them in the chat or you can use the Q&A section. Uh, there will be time for your questions and the answers, so don't hesitate to ask anytime. And uh, if you want to check the links in the slides and everything, then you can go to the uh, meeting details here in the Google Meet and there is a link to the, to the slides. Uh, that's all from me, Maya, your turn. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we're going to present exactly what we do. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, so who are we? We are Project Dot and also called AI DevSecOps team. Uh, so the project started in 2018 as a research project within the AI Center of Excellence at Red Hat, uh, which, which is part of the Office of the CTO organization. Uh, so you can find more about us on our website, which is totstation.ninja. And you can also follow us on YouTube. Uh, we have a YouTube channel called Totstation and also on Twitter. Uh, so you have here a list of, of our current team members. Um, So what is our mission? Uh, so our main purpose is to help Python developers uh, develop py uh, healthy Python applications and also uh, to help um, people with an interest in Python uh, in the data science and artificial intelligence fields. Uh, so our project has multiple parts. So you can see a few of them uh, in the slides. So for example, we have the AICOE CI, which is uh, a CI that builds container images. Uh, and we have different tools like Dependency Monkey, Jupyter Lab requirements, uh, also bots, uh, a Python index called Pulp, uh, and also provide provide analysis for container images. So you can fi find all the details about uh, those project parts uh, in the links, which are in the slides. But today we are going to introduce you in particular to uh, our Python Cloud Resolver. Uh, so the agenda of the meeting is the following. So first we will introduce you uh, to our resolver uh, and then we will uh, we'll, uh, tell you about the benefits of solving your dependencies in the clouds uh, to know your entire environment and your Python dependencies. And then we are going to talk to you about uh, Tamos, which is our CLI tool to uh, use Python cloud-based resolver. And then we'll conclude this presentation with a short demo on how to use Tamos to manage vulnerabilities in your Python software stack. Um, so now I'm going to let Frido introduce you to how the Cloud Python Resolver works. Thanks, Maya. So uh, in the upcoming slides, you will see uh, the underlying PCs, how the Resolver works and what it can offer to you. At the end, as Maya said, we will have a short demo. So uh, prepare your Linux terminal uh, with a Python interpreter ready and uh, we'll go together through a uh, demo. So uh, the Python resolver uh, is uh, very similar to BIP, depend or Poetry. So it resolves dependencies and produces a log file for you. Uh, the difference is that uh, it's not just a resolver, but it's a recommendation engine for uh, Python applications and Python libraries. So when you use it, you get information about libraries that you use and also recommendations uh, how uh, these uh, libraries uh, work. Uh, also information about communities uh, and uh, things like that. The resolver is implemented using uh, gradient free reinforcement learning methods. So we run temporal difference learning in production. Uh, if you are interested in uh, uh, technical details, uh, feel free to follow our documentation that we will walk you through all the, all the parts of the resolver and design decisions uh, that we've made. The resolver itself runs uh, in an OpenShift cluster and uh, we expose an API that is available to users. And uh, we provide a client tool that is called Tamos that can talk to this API, the 
can talk to the cloud resolver and manage your dependencies and your project on your local machine. Uh, the tool is called Tamos and uh, it provides you uh, commands to interact with, with Todd. Uh, if we take a look at uh, how and what are sent to Todd, uh, the Cloud Resolver accepts requirements of your application together uh, with optional constraints on your dependencies and then information about your runtime environment, such as operating system that you use, uh, Python version, and other information uh, such as base container image that you use, or eventually CUDA if you do GPU computation. Uh, this is on the software layer, but the resolver itself uh, accepts information also on the hardware layer, so you can provide information about uh, CPU that you use and also uh, GPU. And in that case, the resolver will uh, do the resolution specifically for your uh, hardware. Uh, besides that, uh, the resolver also accepts static source code analysis, so it can behave differently based on uh, parts of uh, libraries uh, that you use. The last input is uh, called recommendation type, and that states basically your intention with the application. So the resolver can resolve uh, application dependencies to the latest possible versions following uh, uh, version range specifications in the dependency graph. Uh, but you can ask the resolver to resolve, let's say, perform well performing set of dependencies or stable sets of dependencies or a secure uh, set of dependencies. The last stated uh, we will see in the demo. So these are the inputs, and as stated, the resolver uh, gives you back a log file, meaning all dependencies locked down to a specific version together with justification. And that's something uh, that tells you why these dependencies should be used and why they were recommended to you. Okay, so uh, this was uh, more like an input to resolver and output. The resolver itself is uh, designed uh, in a pluggable way, so people can plug their knowledge into the resolver and can change how the resolver will behave in certain situations. This declarative, this uh, pluggable interface is called prescriptions and it provides a declarative interface uh, to the cloud resolver. In fact, these prescriptions are just YAML files that are automatically consumed by the resolver in a deployment. And uh, these YAML files are available on GitHub. So we host them under Todd Station Prescriptions Repository. Anyone can contribute to this repository, provide their knowledge about uh, Python dependencies or runtime environments uh, they use. And then uh, the resolver automatically takes these prescriptions and uh, resolves application dependencies uh, to uh, the best known application dependencies. So these prescriptions uh, state how the desired uh, dependency resolution should look like. If you are more interested in this concept, feel free to check our documentation that is also linked from the prescriptions repository. Let's have a look at an uh, example. So imagine that your application uses Pillow and NumPy. Uh, it is known that Pillow in version 8.3.0 does not work with uh, NumPy. So if users install uh, these two libraries together, they get runtime error uh, that can be uh, seen on the slides. Uh, this can uh, take some time to debug so people need to find uh, how to uh, avoid such issue uh, and if resolver directly directly provides dependencies that do not suffer from this issue uh, then uh, they can focus uh, developers can focus more on delivering applications so on this slide you can see an example prescription that uh, states uh, in a machine readable form that if uh, below in version 8.3.0 is going to be uh, resolved together with NumPy, then the resolver uh, marks uh, that step in the, in the resolution process as uh, not acceptable and will try to find another resolution path uh, so that uh, people do not have uh, this issue uh, in their application dependencies. 
This was an example on Python layer. Uh, the resolver can act differently based on, for example, RPM packages that you have on your system, uh, can uh, act differently based on Python interpreter version, ABI uh, that is available uh, in the runtime, or other libraries such as uh, CUDA or an MKL. Uh, these prescriptions uh, provide like central price to to state how the resolution process should look like and uh, this is something that is on uh, on the cloud uh, when it comes to users uh, they provide uh, requirements as stated before and all the inputs uh, that were mentioned uh, in one of the previous slides so information about runtime environment uh, in a configuration file to called tot.yaml uh, these uh, Additional options to the resolution process provide uh, additional inputs, and if you do not provide them, uh, the resolution process can still be generic and very similar to uh, the resolution process as done by PIP or PIPEN. So now I will hand it over back to Maya. Oh, thank you, Freedom. Uh, so as stated before, we also provide uh, security guidance for your Python applications. Uh, so you can visit the docs uh, presenting the link in this presentation for more information. Uh, but basically what we use, for example, um, we provide uh, guidance based on static source code analysis. So for example, uh, by generating abstract syntax trees of uh, source code to, to analyze it. And we also use uh, knowledge such as uh, um, the vulnerabilities uh, present in the Python Packaging Authority Advisory Database, uh, which is a database of uh, known vulnerabilities for Python in particular. And we also use uh, security scorecards uh, generated by the Open Source Security Foundation, as well as other tools which are not directly related to security, but uh, can help assess the quality of uh, your software. Um, so now we'll uh, do a short demo of Tamos and we will show you with a simple example how you, Tamos can help you manage vulnerabilities in your uh, Python applications. So I'm going to share my screen. So uh, I shared uh, the link to uh, the uh, tutorial. And uh, let's have a look at it. OK. Uh, can everyone see it? Yes. OK, thank you. Uh, so what we're going to do now is see how uh, Tamos can help you see a vulnerability uh, in a simple application that we implemented, which is a, a simple version of uh, Conway's Game of Life, if you know uh, the game. Uh, so you can have an overview of what Tamos can do by typing uh, Tamos help. And you should see here uh, the different commands uh, that are available. Uh, so we have a configuration file, uh, which is called uh, dot, dot, dot Tamos. Um, where you can state, uh, for example, uh, your operating system version and your Python version and the recommendation type you would like to have. So uh, the default recommendation type is the latest. So it means the, the latest version of uh, dependencies are chosen for uh, your application stack. Um, so what we're going to do is now uh, ask Tamos for advice on uh, our software stack application. So I will do Tamos advice. So, OK, uh, here you can see several things. So apart from the warnings, you can see uh, a table, which is the application stack guidance, uh, which has different type of information and warnings uh, with uh, a message uh, that can give you some advice. So for example, uh, on um, what predictable stack we have for you available and uh, different things um, to, to just to see more information about this message. 
And you can also see uh, the recommended stack reports. Uh, so for each dependency name, you have uh, in different information and warnings um, about, for example, uh, some vulnerabilities or issues that you can have, um, for example, um, on these dependencies. OK. Um, so now we're going to install the dependencies with Tamos install. So here we can see the file.log file. OK. So you see, uh, as you can see, we have different dependencies like uh, async click, click, pillow, and pygame. Um, so now we, what we can do is uh, run the game just to, to see how it works. So we'll do time of run uh, game of life. OK, so now we can see, uh, I hope so, the uh, game interface. And so the game of life, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, it's just selecting a few uh, first individuals and then let them uh, reproduce on several generations according to some rules. So here you can have an example that will show you later uh, how you can detect vulnerabilities in it, the dependencies of this game. So. Uh, you can also have an overview of what Tamos has done by uh, typing Tamos log, uh, which will generate uh, the logs of uh, the resolution process. Uh, okay, so now the the part where we introduce a vulnerability to see if Tamos uh, will detect it. So um, what we'll do is introduce uh, Hello in the version that has a known vulnerability, which is uh, 8.0.0. So we add this to our, our um, dependencies. So you can see it has been added here. Uh, and now we'll ask Tamos for advice. So I will do Tamos advice, and I will choose the uh, uh, recommendation type security, because it was set on uh, latest as a default. So now that's doing uh, the resolution. OK, so now what you can see uh, in at the bottom of the terminal is that uh, Pillow could not be resolved because uh, you asked for a secure uh, software stack. And uh, the dependency version you wanted uh, has a known vulnerability, as you can see here. Uh, it was found uh, with the PyPA, uh, PI, uh, PA, sorry, uh, advisory DB database. Um, so now you can't uh, solve your application software stack. So uh, what we can do now to play the game is revert to a uh, version that does not have uh, any known vulnerability. So I think this is the latest version of Pillow, uh, which is 9.0.0. OK, so now it is changed back to a correct version. And now you can do Tamos run uh, game of life. And you can see that you can play the game again. Uh, now it's working properly. So thank you, Maya. One relation to that, so uh, you saw that uh, the pillow was pinned to a specific version that will, that had vulnerability. If Maya would not pin uh, that specific version, the resolver itself would find uh, a vulnerable free uh, version of pillow if that would be possible based on the dependency graph of the application. Okay, uh, so uh, I think uh, that was uh, it from the demo. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, thank you, Maya. Thank you, Frida. I don't see any questions in the chat. Uh, not in the Q and A. Uh, anybody can ask now. The thing I would like to know is 
Uh, how many prescriptions do you have and uh, in what area are the most? So the prescription repository itself has uh, more than 62,000 uh, prescriptions. Uh, they come from uh, different sources, so you can find uh, information that was aggregated from PyPI, for example, information about maintainers. You can also find information uh, that is calculated based on open source security uh, uh, scorecards. Uh, but you can also find uh, uh, prescriptions that are specific to uh, packages. I think the most prescriptions uh, can be found for package TensorFlow, uh, where there are prescriptions to fix uh, TensorFlow issues or resolve TensorFlow specifically for uh, uh, CUDA environments and things like that. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have a question from Miri Podivin. What kind of gradient free algo are you using? Uh, it's temporal difference learning. Uh, can you write it in the chat, please? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, okay, another question for me. Uh, I'm curious how many contributors you have. Uh, I think the prescription can anybody put in. So do you have the number? The number of contributors to prescriptions. Yeah. Uh, we can check it on, on a GitHub. So we have 10 contributors, but one is bot. I don't know if that counts. Yeah, we can count everybody. <laughs> Okay, another question uh, from me. Uh, what kind of research of project are we working on for artificial intelligence? Can you give some example? Uh, so uh, this project was a research project uh, and uh, other projects, I think uh, there is a group that is trying to optimize uh, network interface cards and power consumption of these network interface cards. Uh, I think uh, Sanjay uh, works on, on that. Uh, then we had um, uh, AI ops and still have. So people that are analyzing uh, logs of OpenShift clusters and uh, another let's say research project that uh, was uh, in ai center of excellence was data hub so um, these are i would say largest ones maybe at least that i'm aware of interesting thank you some other questions um you can also raise your hand and, and ask directly if you want Okay, sounds like it's all. Thank you again, both of you. It was a very interesting representation. Thank everybody for joining. Last thing I have for you is uh, if you will find a few minutes time to give us some feedback on this series, I will give you the link in a few seconds, hopefully. And... Here is the form. Thank you again, everybody. Uh, enjoy the weekend and see you by the next session of the Check Talk series. Thank you. Thank you.